Hello everyone, welcome back to Remedy OMM. Today, we'll be going over another high yield topic for boards, sympathetics versus parasympathetics. I'm going to keep this lecture short and brief, so let's jump right in. Very simply, your autonomic nervous system is made up of the parasympathetic and the sympathetic systems. These two systems need to be in a certain balance in the body. When they are unbalanced is when you start to see disease in the form of medical problems. It is the osteopathic belief that this imbalance in sympathetic and parasympathetic tone can cause somatic changes that when manipulated can supplement and aid in treatment. These somatic changes that occur as a response to the dysfunction of visceral organs are deemed viscerosomatic reflexes and can take the form of tart changes or another topic that we'll talk about later in this series called Chapman's Points. Your parasympathetic system is responsible for your rest and digest response. Think of this system as being responsible for how you feel when you are lying on the couch after a large meal. You're relaxed, blood flow is directed towards your intestines to support and digestion. Maybe you see a piece of cake and you start salivating a little bit. This is your parasympathetic tone. The picture on the right here shows the nerves responsible for your parasympathetics. These include some cranial nerves, but the most important are the vagus and the pelvic splanchnic nerves down below. The important levels to know for parasympathetics are the OA to C2, correlating to the vagus nerve, and S2 to S4, correlating to the pelvic splanchnic nerves. Your sympathetic tone determines your fight or flight response. So when you hear sympathetics, think to yourself, how would I feel if a bear was chasing me? You would be going crazy, and I'd hope you'd run, unless you're Russian or the mountain from Game of Thrones. Your heart would race, pupils would dilate, you'd be sweating, etc. The sympathetic chain is the bundle of nerves responsible for this response and is located adjacent to the spine. Different sets of vertebral segments correspond to different organ systems. As you can see in this table, the further we go down, the lower the organ system in the body. And we'll go over the high yield ones now. Some segment sets aren't so high yield that you must memorize them, but it's good to have a few in the bag to use as landmarks. These two segment sets are super important to know. Definitely know the heart, T1 to T5. You can think to yourself, 5 minus 1 is 4 if that helps, and the heart has 4 chambers. The set just below that is the lungs at T2 to T7. Both of these structures receive parasympathetics through the vagus nerve, which recall will present with viscerosomatic changes at OA to C2. These three sets you don't really have to memorize, but knowing them tends to help with complex questions because many times in the question stems, they'll give you some segments that exhibit tart changes on osteopathic exam. And knowing the segment sets can actually lead you to the correct answer. For example, trying to distinguish a pancreatitis versus a cholecystitis when they give you little information. If they tell you there's tart changes between T9 to T12, well, you can be more confident in going with pancreatitis because cholecystitis would show changes higher up. It's little bits of information like that that can help you get the right answer. Notice here how the lower GI tract actually has parasympathetics coming from the pelvic splanchnics, aka S2 to S4. Here's the table again for your reference. Practice questions will help you sharpen your instincts for this information. You don't have to memorize all these. I would pay attention to the ones you see in question stems because those tend to be the most high yield. In the next lecture, I'll go over a few questions to help solidify this concept. Pretty short lecture today. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and support our channel. We'll see you guys in the next lecture.